a new large electric SUV with a significantly high range. This is the Kia EV9, Kia's new flagship. It's an electric SUV and finally we have a large EV, which is not in the super high top premium segment. Could this be at this moment the best large EV to go for? We'll find out here with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here, starting with the front, really strong. This is the GT line, so this top sporty trim. You can see here the daytime running light in a vertical way. And we have a beautiful matte blue color. Wow, I mean, this looks amazing, doesn't it? The GT line also features more sporty features. For example, here also towards the side, we have the 21 inch wheels and also in this I would almost say a concept car-like design. 19-inch would be the base wheel. Then we have the contrasting wheel arch in the high-gloss black, then here in the GT line. We can see this kind of strange side mirrors here. These are the optional camera mirrors, but you would also start with normal mirrors if you rather prefer that. Here at the side profile, we can see a very angular line, so it goes against the modern trend of creating these aerodynamic bulb designs and so on and I think it just looks stunning. Turning indicator check looks pretty amazing here in the front how it replaces the data mining light doesn't it? 5 meters zero one or 197 inches is the lengthiest so really a full size SUV indeed. Either rear wheel drive with a small battery around 8 seconds in the acceleration figure or 9 seconds with a bigger battery and if you go with a bigger battery you can also go all wheel drive then you have elect one electric motor per axle and then you get less than six seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. So that is significantly quick for such a large vehicle indeed. Top speed, 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour for the all-wheel drive version, 185 kilometers an hour or 115 miles per hour for the rear-wheel drive version. Once again, so strong, really angular, against the trend indeed. Yeah, it doesn't look EV at all and I'm absolutely sold on the exterior. What about you? turning indicators in the rear. That looks pretty amazing, doesn't it? Here with this really single element design. Is there a frunk? Yes, there is one. It's small, but definitely leaves enough space for a cable and you can easily open it from the inside of the vehicle. As for the battery sizes, by the way, either 76 kilowatt hours or 100 kilowatt hours. And that will probably translate into a real world range of either 400 kilometers, 250 miles, or 500 kilometers, 300 miles. Recharging will be possible with the 800 volt architecture, bringing you 10 to 80% state of charge in about 25 minutes. And here a silver vehicle as a contrast. This is not the GT line, so a base line, but already looks quite strong. Of course, you don't have so much black contrast, but rather than a silver contrast in the lower part. Which one do you like better? Here the base version you can see has different turning indicators, not the vertical one, but kind of separate one inside, but also looks cool, doesn't it? In the side here, these are 20 inch, so basically in between, but design wise, definitely prefer the GT line. Yeah, but you can get also more designs. This is to me a little bit too closed, of course, thinking about aerodynamics and so on. This is how it looks like when the mirrors fold in or out together with the door handles, either here in the flush setup, aerodynamics, and then accessible. And here with the silver car, you can see very well here in the side profile how the glass housing is really embodied by the vehicle colors, horizontal stress. And finally, a silver look for the rear. By the way, a heat pump is also featured with this vehicle. Then here, the doors. You can see here, these are flush door hands. They go in when you close the vehicle. Door closing sound, really solid indeed. Then inside of the doors, rather soft touch here, nice fabric insert. This then here is a little bit softer even. This is then here the screen for the digital mirrors, but once again, just an option. A lot of options here as well. Heated steering wheel, cool seat, heated seat, and everything with real buttons, easy to control. I really like that. And this interior is also pretty futuristic indeed. Horizontal focus area with this one screen design and the seats are particularly interesting. These are the GT line seats, so they have this dual tone scheme as well, a lot of controls. This is then the button for the relaxation function that it goes backward actually. And the material is bio PU, so it's all animal free, even the steering wheel. 
and they don't use then raw oil but for example castor oil and corn as base so plant-based oils and materials base to create these seeds together with a lot of recycling share and other parts so they are really going full circle as for sustainability that's top notch and it's super comfortable indeed the material quality is amazing so also have this has perforation sea cooling you have very good command driving position and you see this large hood in front of you you really get a large suv feeling there is plenty of headroom left, even with 189 or 6 foot 2 This is also the small panoramic roof. Well, panoramic roof, not quite, but just a small glass roof. You can actually really open it. And why not? This shade here is just manual. And then the rear seats, they have another separate small glass roof. Interior cockpit overview in the GT line. Two 12.3 inch screens, horizontal layout. And the cool thing is, the climate unit still here with a manual control. I love that, colder and also warmer. And then here the vent strength, so straightforward still. You have these hotkeys that are basically integrated here and they give you some kind of haptic feedback. For example, then here you can access the map. The cool thing here now, upgraded with the EV9, they also have now route planning for your charging stops. So it automatically calculates the charging stops and then also preheats the battery when you have a charging station set this is really important then the steering wheel here in and out up and down once again really good volume jogs here rear buttons at the steering wheel they found a good user interface the shifting levers here you put it forward like this in drive mode right side p and back to reverse so this is really you step in the vehicle and you directly know where is what then in the lower part you have this huge middle console you could put up this here then you have inductive charging pad underneath for your smartphone and in the front you can slide this one open and everything resonates very well this is premium quality indeed push these here and then you have two large cup holders that are even adaptive and below the middle tunnel you also have more space digital instruments clear to read simple and straightforward indeed you can adjust them a little bit actually what you want to have in the middle and you also get a head-up display quick up close look at the infotainment here you have this main menu with these tiles car wash mode is interesting so it sets up the vehicle that you can go into the car wash without getting wet for example so it automatically closes the sunroof and so on why not and you can see these hotkeys are working and the map is also it's a decently responsible but of course you could always go for your apple carplay or android auto but then you don't have the pre-calculation for the charging stops particularly interesting here usb-c charger usb-c charger the second one and then you can switch it from only charging to charging and connect and then also your apple carplay or android auto is being activated both wired though rear seats actually everything that resonates with the quality is really nice here sounds and when you feel when you touch everything very good opens quite wide so you can easily access the rear seats this is here the single seat setup pretty cool like captain seats in this case in a six seater so two 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 with a third seating row you can also get a through bench then you have three seats in the second seating row then you have a seven seater and for this six seater you have two different setups either you get a relaxation seat then you can not only put the back part in the rear um, you can have the same function like the front seats you know like with the calf rest and it goes a little bit like that for like this sleeping position or like this you have the swivel seat first of all you can go front and rear normally on this you know on this slider but then the swivel seat has this separate lever here and then you can now it gets really funny you can either do it like this um, i mean that could be like a like a lookout position for example or maybe like a picnic position like when like, like, like all the crumbles are falling to the ground then and not inside the vehicle i you know what i mean kids you know don't crumble in daddy's or mother's mother's car right <laughs> and then we can also go around and now it gets really interesting yeah i know you are you're having a great laugh now this must look amazing so and then i can go all the way around yeah like this and then i can go back can i go back yeah when um 
you know, when the front seat is a little bit more to the front, that would be better. So you can turn it like really like 180 around and you can have like a family chat or something. But you can see here, the space is limited. So I need to be, you know, going more back to this on the, on the slider here. But then the front seat can't be at Thomas position. Look at that. Even seat heating and seat cooling is available for the second row. That's amazing. They really thought about the rear passengers. You have cup holders, USB-C chargers in the seats, and then you can pull out this one here and it serves either as a tray or you can also open this one, have another large box. What about the third seating row here? Well, it is considering decently comfortable also because of the soft seats. Also with this perforation, you also have isofix. You can install child seats here. When I have the second row, the way I could still sit in there, then it's you know hardly possible for me to sit behind that. So for adults in the rear, not quite. So either for child seats or you know when children are not that tall yet. Let's check out the trunk. 730 liters when the third row is down. Very interesting because look at that. The width here in the rear, that's enormous, like 130 in meters or 55 inches, third row up, but it's really easy to fold this one down. This is then a manual function. And then for this second row, in this case here, single seat setup, but you can also get the bench, two buttons here, and then they easily fold down. Wow, look at that. So the normal trunk length here, this is like 115 in meters or 45 inches. To this one, and then to the driver's seat, Wow, this is like, this is, wow, this is like 2 meters 15 or, or 85 inches. The second rear setup, this is the through bench. You can see here, one third, two third split. I moved the one third part forward. This one I moved backward that you can see the difference there too. And then let's take a seat. The seat comfort is, I would say, comparable to the captain's seats. The captain's seats, of course, are a little bit more fun because the middle part is free. You can directly go through the rear seats, but this can also be more practical depending on your use case, of course. And then you can also vary the rear part here and you can slide it forward or backward. And that goes quite easily. Headroom here in the rear, by the way, with 189 or 602 is also no problem at all. Here, by the way, very nice, soft ceiling that feels really good as well. What's also interesting is that we can directly slide this bench here. So we have one button here on the top and then when I press this one, you could say here like this, and then you can easily access the rear, just that I'm now in a bad position. <laughs> okay, I took a trip around now. Here, what I also want to show you here, the manual sunshade, and it goes really wide all over the screen here. It's really cool. So good for the kids in the rear. And then let me get inside. So this works as well. And I've put this one here a little bit more forward now. And you can see once again, yeah, it does not fit that well for tall, tall, tall. But overall, it's nice to have this flexibility also for more child seats or for, you know, like smaller children or something in the rear. Pretty cool here. For the second seating row, you have an own AC unit in the ceiling. And I love how they pay attention to details here. This feels also so good, looks cool here, open or close of the vents. And here a quick example how the base version is a little bit simpler. You just have, you know, this cubby hole right there. You don't have this slider where you can slide it out and without the tray and so on, but you can of course also live with that. The trunk of the seven seater is actually quite the same. Here you can see this through bench and then the same mechanism, put them forward. Super easy, straightforward. Look at that loading area. That's really amazing indeed. Then here in the front, by the way, there's some more space underneath here, but just barely. This is, for example, the storage then here for this um, for this rear cover. Uh, but cables, they rather think to you know that you store them in the front in the in the front there. You also have 12 volt supply here. Then you have a real 250 volt supply here. But of course, you can also use the vehicle to load function on the outside of the vehicle. So both is possible, like for the camping mode. And then, by the way, if you want to put up the third seating row again, it's so easy. Just pull these here like this and secure it here in your favorite position or like this. And that's it. Two things remains to be seen. For example, if you can also drive in Europe with the seats facing backwards, regulations are not clear yet. And also if the smaller battery will also come to the European market. But overall, you can say 
It is one of the best proposals for a large EV at this moment, definitely we can say so. We of course keep you up with driving, also check about the real world range and so on. And you can tune in for example to our Kia EV6 GT review or maybe if you think about a large EV sedan, recent VW ID7.